Three, two, one. Hey yo, what's up? It's your boy Timmy Lee Glean, and I'm coming at you with another revampment, if that's even a word. I'm bringing back the single father thoughts, and um, yeah. the reason why I'm bringing this back is because I have many things to talk about still. Um, I know I did say in my last um, Most Honest video part two that I will be done and speaking about the nuclear family will be the final topic, but I have a couple more things and I don't believe that I'm gonna be a single father forever. And um, I might as well get all these thoughts out before I become a married man because I trust and believe in the most high God's plan. I don't know how exactly that's gonna happen. I don't know who my wife is and I don't know who God is preparing for me. But all I know is that God is preparing me and he's making me the best possible man that I can be. He's allowed me to be in a position of leadership and headship for my family and giving me a learning curve to even marriage, I feel like, through parenting my children. And um, just a lot of the previous topics that I spoke about was the... I feel like the foundation for what I'm gonna speak about moving forward. And I believe these things are vital for single parents to really hear, parents in general to hear, but the expertise that I have is on being a single parent. I'm not a married parent, but I've been in a position where I was with the person that I had my children with. And I was in that place where, you know, I was, living off of another's income, living in somebody else's household. And I went from that to being the man that works and desiring to provide. And once you try to do that with the wrong type of woman, um, she will push you away. You know, it's an intimidating thing for some men to be in a position to provide when they're used to you being that docile man when they're used to you being that beta male as they call it as they're used to you being that simp as they call in the manosphere or in this red pair uh red pill realm and um you know once you're a man that is weak and you gain your masculinity and you're with a woman that is masculine, you're gonna clash and it's not gonna work and it's going to push you away and you're going to leave. Regardless if you have children or not, you're gonna leave. So that's what happened to me. I left, um, I got my own place, uh, working a better job of course, but when I got custody of my children, I had to leave my job to care for my children. Now, when I was doing that, I feel like it was very fulfilling because I got to train up my children. They were very undisciplined being in the care and custody of their other parent. And not to try to make anybody look bad, but I just want to explain the results of children under the care of a single mother that is negligent of certain needs that the children need. And a big need is the father being in the children's lives. But if there is some sort of resistance on allowing the father to see the child, especially if you're a father that wants to see your child, there's going to be issues that come with that because statistically, as I showed in my other uh, single father's thoughts when children need their fathers, you can see statistically, you know, the issues that come about when a child doesn't have their father. So for me to be in a position to train up my children for these past two and basically half years of being out of work and, and, and being able to teach them and being able to, you know, speak to them about most highest ways and to be able to encourage them and motivate them and kind of get them up to speed, even though they're still very much behind, but they're a lot more ahead than they were before. So that's a blessing. But over the time of just working and um, with the children and working at home, doing housework and, and washing clothes and doing dishes and cleaning the house and understanding how tedious these things can be and really understanding how hard this work can be, I have grown to appreciate the role of a woman, especially a woman that, you know, 
dedicates herself to being a homemaker, a woman that dedicates herself to being the person that takes care of the home and takes care of the children while the man goes out and provide. And I started to realize, you know, before I left the person that I had these children with, I was working and she was at home and I was willing and able to you know, provide and, and do all that, willing to marry her and everything and uh, play that role. But, you know, it was just wasn't the one for me and I'm OK with that. But regardless of the past, you know, I don't really need to talk about this testimony anymore. I have it in my music, um, you know, and, and some of my previous videos. But besides that. I desire to work, you know, I desire to do what a man does and I'm sitting here every day with the children with this deep desire to want to work, you know, and it was very discouraging. It started to bring me down. It started to weigh down on me, even my mental. I feel like, you know, just in the beginning stages of raising the children and, and being here with the children, it, 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 it took a toll on me. Um, I dealt with deep anxiety and deep depression. Um, it's been days where I didn't, well, been days where I ain't shower in weeks, you know. And a couple of times where I went went months without showering at all. You know, I wash the main parts and that's it, but I would not shower at all, you know, for months on end. There's been moments I just drag out of bed, but at least I got up, but I'd be dragging out of bed because this, this thing was just weighing me down and I feel like it's because I knew I desire more, but I know God had a plan for me and I had to trust in God's plan. And, you know, now since I started work again, um, Glory to God, you know, um, I've been blessed with a better opportunity than I had before. You know, now my mother helps me out, and that's a blessing that my mother helps me out. That's what grandparents are for, you know, and, um, you know, we're out of the pandemic now, or ain't no this, ain't no that. And let me tell you, my mother, she was paranoid about this stuff because I probably could have went to work before, but the way that it was all set up, People getting COVID left and right, and you know she was taking care of my grandmother before she passed away. Um, rest her soul. Um, you know, so it was a lot going on. With my mother, you know, and things like that. But I know she wanted to. I'm not going to get into the personal dealings and the issues on what created the resistance between me and having you know reliable babysitting. But a lot of it was centered around paranoia, around the COVID, and not on my end. I wasn't paranoid at all. I wasn't afraid at all. I uh, wasn't even really worried about that at all, more so than what am I going to do to provide? You know, what am I going to do to, you know, just, I'm not working. So I had to really solely, and I feel like this was a humbling place because I'm so used to doing everything myself. I wanted to, you know, it was in my heart to, but God wanted me to be still, get into his word, learn more about him, but I wanted to go to work. You know, after learning about, you know, just my role as a man in the Bible, you know, when I read, uh, you know, a man that um, doesn't provide for his own is worse than an unbeliever, worse than an infidel. And, you know, principles like if you don't work, you don't eat, you know, things like that. So I was, I was in the beginning, I was feeling some sort of condemnation because I really wanted to work, you know, but I couldn't, you know. And um, this is where me being a traditional minded man was my downfall because I didn't have children with a traditional minded person that desired to want to traditionally be feminine, you know. You can do the traditional things, but if you're not traditionally feminine with feminine qualities like gentleness, meekness, that's going to make me want to get up and work. You know, but I was very discouraged even at those moments to chase my dreams, you know, or just to do anything. I was discouraged to work. I was discouraged because I was, you know, influenced by my feelings. Um, I was very weak, as I said. Uh, 
simp as they call it I was but in many cases I still had masculine qualities about myself and I think that's because I didn't give myself to many women but because I didn't give myself to many women and I feel like the mix of pornography and giving me a social awkwardness that when an opportunity presented itself of you know consistent physical contact because I went a long time being lonely without somebody and watching all this garbage you know when I finally got I just settled no matter how they treated me which was terrible on my end and showed that I had a deep level of low self-esteem but just being in this place right now where I'm at today um, and I want to make a video I'm gonna make a video about this and I most likely will release that video before I release this video so just speaking about 100 plus days of semen retention and um, like I said most likely I'm going to be past that and probably at the point of uh, about four months of semen retention by the time this video comes out and um, you know it's just been a very deep process uh, progression in life and God has blessed me for honoring my temple and you know I have temptations and things like that but ultimately I desire a wife I desire to be a traditional husband a traditional man to provide for my family and to have a wife you know somebody to care for my children to teach my daughters you know um, you know how to be a wife and for me to raise my son on how to be a husband and and not just a husband and wife but just to be children of God you know to raise them to, to walk into the ways of God first and foremost you know but if they were to have children I prefer them to be married and you know I tell them all the time don't be like me you know having children out of wedlock because it comes with lots of problems you know and I think that if you're watching this video and you had your children out of wedlock you know that you know you have issues and even especially in the brown community um, and you look at the curses of Deuteronomy and we really fit those curses probably more than anybody else in the world when you look at our community of people and our marriage statistics and our and we can just forget the statistics, just our marriage and our communities and how we care for our children and the fathers in our communities. And I feel like I have an untold story that many um, haven't heard, a perspective that many don't put light on because it's, it's so many single mothers that we glorify. So everything that I'm speaking about right now will be encompassed into this whole series um in this latter half of the single father series so if you go back to my previous single father thoughts i'm going to have a playlist and you're going to be able to see it on the end screen um you're going to be able to really get a gist of why i'm coming out with this i've been a single father for two years but you know finally back in work and and, and doing what i need to do to provide for my family um you know, I trust and believe in God's plan for a wife, but as of now, I'm a single father. I work. My mother helps me, so the, the children's grandmother helps me with caring for them as I work. And simultaneously, as I work this job opportunity as well, I'm working on, you know, uh, clothing company and also production company and also this content creation and also music so yeah there's this there's other things that's floating around as well in, in my artistic space and um i'm doing a lot you know even you know desiring to be a guitar teacher you know still producing and i engineer my own vocals as well you know and just learning the guitar you know, and like I said, teaching and just it's it's a bunch of stuff that's going on, you know, and um I could tell you everything, but it don't even matter. I really don't care about telling you anything, honestly. And you don't need to know everything, but what I'm saying is, you know, I have a lot that's on my plate right now and I could be getting a lot of work done if I had somebody to help me, honestly. And also just you know, once you're once you alone with children, and I believe I said this in a previous video, you're gonna desire, you know, that person that 
not to say that you could be weak with, you know, because I don't ever want to be weak, you know, but to be vulnerable, to have a best friend as far as, you know, of the opposite sex should be my wife and it shouldn't be no other woman but my wife. I desire to play the masculine role and I desire for my wife to be the feminine role in the house. So I'd be the masculine head, she'd be the feminine head, you know, and uh, I do things out here to get it for my family and she run things in the household and we both work as a team and she helps me lead, she helps me with God's plan for, for our lives, for the family vision that God has given me. And I desire to be that masculine man, you know, and um, there's nothing wrong with that. And I always felt wrong for, you know, being that man. Like whenever I was in my past relationships and I would step out and, 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 and be masculine, I was shamed for it. Whenever I spoke up as a masculine man, I was shamed for it. But I knew what I felt in my spirit, what I naturally felt. But once you're dealing with the... The woman in the in in the wrong nature, and I don't want to call you because you're a masculine woman wrong. I'm just saying it ain't for me. It's wrong for me. You know, as a Christian man that believes in biblical principles, I believe that a man should be the the provider, and I would say sole provider. But if we live in this society realistically, there will be two income homes, and that's realistic. And I'm not against any woman that works or does anything but it's it's like are you able to submit to a man even if you make more money than him and i know what i desire now and being a single father i need help and i need somebody to listen and this ain't no like oppressive anything like if i were to have a wife she needs to listen because I already have a plan that God has given me. And, of course, it's being worked out, the kinks and everything, and even personal discipline. And, 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 and you know, I'm getting over my issues of not having self-control with the, with, with the addictions, you know, that I had to, to smoking and to those adult films that I was watching and the fapping that I was doing. But now overcoming all those things by the grace of God, because I give God credit for overcoming those things. Now I'm in this position where I could truly, you know, put more time and focus, you know, be, being able to work now and being able to provide and pay the bills and not have to depend on government programs and government assistance because I'm done with that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the food stamps. I'm done with rental assistance now. I'm, I'm done with it. And I'd say I got, you know, permanent rental assistance, but I, I, I apply for some programs and things like that to help me out because I ain't had no job and I have no unemployment and I had no income you know what could I do but by God's grace I've been in this household for about two and a half years without working and that shows you what God has done and what God has led me you know to really raise up my children you know and this is a this is a journey that I'm going to be doing my whole life until they're adults and I'll still be a form of counsel for them when they're grown-ups and to have a wife to help me. I desire, I desire to play that masculine role and um, I believe it's going to be awesome. You know, I want it to work and now I'm working. You know, and it ain't just a, a job, you know. This ain't even a normal job and... I don't really even feel like talking to you about it, you know, but ultimately I'm at work now and there's multiple facets, there's layers to this work. Um, and you'll eventually see, you know, but regardless, um, God has blessed me tremendously and I'm just thankful and, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back to work just overall and just, you know, getting back into this space where I could really do some good stuff, you know, for the community, do some good stuff for my children, you know, and, you know, just ultimately, whoever listens to this message, rather you're a single father, um, a father, you know, that barely sees your children or dealing with court, you know, and things like that, like, there's a lot that fathers deal with that many don't understand, and in the black community, it's 
this dominant narrative of the deadbeat father, or how men aren't there, and this and that, you know, and we go through the small percentage of men that having a large percentage of the children that are leaving a lot of these children behind, three, four, five different baby mamas, you know, but when you get a man that's want to dedicate himself to that one woman, I had my three children with one woman, you know. There's a lot of men like this, and they will marry that woman, and eight times out of ten, they will get divorced. So, I'm not trying to paint a bad picture around the BW, or even point out anything negative about the BMs. And, uh, you know, uh, when I say black woman, black man, basically, you know, and I'm not trying to point out the negatives, like I said, either or. But there has to be a level of accountability on the woman's side when it comes to these issues. And the issue is, you know, we need more feminine women. But how can women be feminine? How can women be feminine when much of our men are feminine and they're used to having control over them? And then once a masculine man actually steps up and, 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 and says something about this, you know, about any of the stuff that goes on in our community, you know, you're deemed as a misogynist, you're deemed as evil, you're deemed as, <laughs> you know, just a woman hater and just all these, you know, bigot, you know, you just hear all, you hear everything just for you caring about the nuclear family structure of your community, you know, but ultimately, uh don't care what anybody thinks um you know i trust in god's will you know regardless i'm not going to be politically correct i'm not going to tiptoe around my words i'm going to tell you what it is and you need to know you know because there's not enough of us masculine men in the black community brown community stepping up and speaking you know about the issues the true issues without being demonized you know, so you can say whatever you want about me. I decided to step up and, and take on raising my children myself. And there's a lot more brown men that would do it if they could. But unfortunately, they're being, you know, pushed away from their children. Children being withheld. And you hear many people justify, you should fight for your children. Why should I have to fight to see what I help create? Many don't sign a birth certificate. Many get thrown into foster care. Many, like myself, leave the household because they're tired of fighting. There's a lot of kind men that just get tired and they want to improve their lives. They want to do better for themselves. And if I got to leave these children behind to get away from a nagging woman, to get away from a contentious woman, to get away from a brawling woman, a, a evil evil woman, a, 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 an abusive, toxic woman, and then you demonize men for walking away. You know. But ultimately, you know, I desire to play the masculine role. And not to play as a game. This ain't no game. But when I mean play, I mean to truly just step in this role. We live in this world and this world is a matrix. And it's like a video game simulation. So if I say play, I mean I'm going to play this role. I'm going to play it well. I'm going to do what I need to for my family, and I thank God that I'm here. And I know this video was probably a little longer than I expected, but this is the revamp of the single father thoughts. And this single father thought is masculine man. And, um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, regardless, um... I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably gonna back to back these joints too, you know, so you probably gonna get one more with me like this uh, before I go to sleep, because I do gotta go to bed, but, you know. But regardless, um, I just wanna thank you for watching this video. Um, I pray that this message touches you, you know. Um, and if you're a man that's a beta male or a uh, you know, a simp as they call, and you have children or a child with somebody, 
you know, word of advice, stand up and be a man. And even if you got to walk away from the situation, you're not walking away from your children. Remember that. You're walking away from violence. You're walking away from abuse. You're walking away from toxicity. And you're walking towards improving your life and bettering yourself for your children. Remember, be smart. Have a sound mind. You know, don't allow your emotions to get you. Don't allow your feelings to keep you around somebody. And don't allow even what you feel about your children. No, leave. Yes, I said it. Yeah, you got a contentious woman that's always trying to fight, that's always trying to argue, that don't want to solve any problems, that don't want to listen to your solutions. Because you as a man logically think of solutions and they will dissolve them. Leave. Even if you got to leave your children behind. I've done the same thing and I did so with right intentions and look what God, God bless me. My children are sleeping in their rooms right now. Glory to God. And I'm not saying this is going to happen for all men, you know, and not to say because I'm a Christian and, you know, desire and strive to be Christ-like and desire and strive to walk in the ways of God and, and, and desire to honor God with my temple and to be a vessel used for his glory. And because of these things, I'm not going to say that was the main reason, but I believe that that played a role that was a main factor. And why I have my children. And the number one thing I would say is the most high God has granted me, you know, being in this position. God has done this in my life. And I'm saying that God can do it for you as well. Be a masculine man. Don't be effeminate. Don't be a beta male. Don't be a simp. No, be a masculine man. I don't care about alpha male. I don't really care about the titles as much. But I'm saying be a man. And watch how God blesses you. All right. Once again, regardless, thank you. And, um, God bless.